And in the end, what really matters is that it all fits, that it all meshes together and, and everybody has one common vision. Uh, you know, a couple of things I look for uh, in a coaching staff. As all of you know, I was very deliberate. Uh, make sure that puzzle fit. Uh, really, all 35 years of experience I have in college coaching, uh, uh, you know, I used all of that to try to put this staff together. But uh, a couple of things I look for, number one, uh, you know, and you're going to hear me say the same thing maybe when it comes to recruits. Uh, I wanted coaches that, that really wanted to be here. You know, there's not a coach here that I had to beg to come. Uh, and that's very important. You know, I wanted coaches that really shared the same vision that I do, that, you know, see New Mexico really as a unique place and see the potential that this program has. And I think they saw that coming in. I think they really understand that now after having been here for, for three straight recruiting weekends. I mean, th this is a heck of a presentation here uh, from start to finish. So I think we all share that vision of what this can be. The second thing I think I look for was, you know, coaches that can make impact on players because that's what makes the difference. Can they impact players? I, I think first, in the short term, can they teach them? Can they show them how to be a better player? Can they teach them, show them how to be a better student? That's short term. And in the long term, can they teach them how to be a better person, better husband, be more productive in life? Uh, you know, I think we really do have the potential to be a heck of a staff. You know, I, I use the word potential because we haven't done anything yet. I mean, let, let's, let's call it what it is. It's potential. Uh, you look at the resumes, uh, you look at the experience, it jumps out at you. But, you know, it's not what we know, it's what the players know. And it's not what we do, it's what the players do. So in the end, it's about productivity. It's about putting a product on that field and getting these players to believe and to do the same things that we want them to believe and to do. But uh, early signs, I think what separates really good staffs from average staffs, I think first it's chemistry. Uh, I've seen a lot these three weekends of recruiting. Uh, first of all, chemistry uh, between the coaches is very important. I've seen that. Uh, chemistry between our players and the coaches. I've seen some of that. We've had a lot of players that helped us with recruiting. All these coaches have been around them in the weight room. And I think the third thing, the chemistry with the recruits, the recruits' families and the coaches. So I've seen those things. The second thing is highly competitive, highly competitive. So we haven't done a thing yet. But I have been around these coaches. Uh, I am impressed uh, with the chemistry they've developed, and I've impressed with their work ethic and their competitiveness. So uh, again, let me introduce each coach to you. Uh, first of all, Ben Hilgart is not here. And that's a great sign. That's a great sign, because probably the most important hire in this program is Ben Hilgart, the strength coach. And I know from being around strength coaches, when you call, on a cell phone, or you call their office, if a strength coach answers that call, he's probably not a great strength coach. He should be out on the floor working these kids, and that's where Ben Hilgard is right now. Seven years at Arizona State. Uh, my son was a walk-on at Arizona State. Was in that program for five years. I know exactly what we're getting. We hit a home run there. Uh, second, uh, Brian Despain comes here. Uh, football ops. Uh, Brian comes from Texas A&M. Earned about six degrees there. Uh, his dad actually coached with me at Texas A&M back in probably 1985. A uh, very detail-oriented person. Uh, as far as the coaching staff, uh, Bob DeBess, offensive coordinator. Uh, I go back to, to 1985. I was at Texas A&M. Bob was at TCU with a head coach named Jim Wacker. They were running split back veer. Split back veer. Uh, a couple years later, three or four years later, they were one of the first teams in the Southwest Conference. Houston was in the run and shoot, but TCU was a one back, three wide, throwing it every down team. So he's done both. He was at Purdue with Joe Tiller, uh, has a great background. Uh, running back coach DeAndre Smith, you guys know DeAndre. Uh, he was here for one year before, um, Rocky Long's last year. 
interesting. I interviewed DeAndre up at the Craft uh, San Francisco Bowl. Flew up over Christmas. He was at the University of Illinois. I met his wife, I met his two sons. Younger son has a lot of style. Reminds me of Will Smith's young son. Wearing those glasses that were non-prescription, had the whole deal going. But great family. Um, I'm really excited to have DeAndre here. Uh, Jason Lensmeyer, um, first guy I interviewed. Come bouncing in that office, uh, uh, burning up, burning up with Lobo football. Uh, impressed me from the moment he walked in that office of how much he loves this place. Passionate about coaching. Started four years here. Some guys can get up on the blackboard and draw all day. He can do that, but he can go out there and show them how to do it. Wasn't that long ago he was playing here. Uh, Derek Wareheim is going to coach the tight ends, also work with the offensive tackles. He's Tulsa's Jason Lensmeyer. Started four years at Tulsa. Uh, they're about the same exact age. Was with Bob at Sam Houston State. He's going to coach the tight ends, work with the offensive tackles and individual. Another guy that can get down there and show them how to do it. Wide receiver coach, Taylor Stubblefield. Um, maybe our best receiver right now. I've coached against him when he was at Purdue. Caught about 80 balls a year. Uh, held, the, held the NCAA record until this past season when Broyles from Oklahoma broke that record. Uh, against Texas A&M. I, I think from a fundamental standpoint of showing receivers how to play the game, uh, I, I think he's as good as there is. So that's our offensive staff. Uh, I think Rob Dean is calling someone here. Maybe <laughs> I was thinking that was a recruit, and I was going to jump on him. <laughs> uh, defensive staff, uh, Ron West, unique, unique guy. You guys will enjoy getting to know him. Uh, his personality is, is something that's contagious. Uh, I've seen that in recruiting, going in these homes with him. Uh, he gets more hugs than any man deserves to get in those homes. He's a heck of a recruiter. 16 years on offense, 16 years on defense. Uh, has coached, comes here from the University of Illinois. Uh, Illinois probably made, I think they did, make the biggest gain in defensive stats. Um, I think the year before Ron came to Illinois. They were ranked what, Ron, on defense? 93rd. And this past year, they were ranked 6th. 3-4 Six. Six. Um, style, um, adapts to what players can do. I love the fact he's coached on both sides of the ball. I mean, that, that's hard to find a guy with that kind of experience. Um, secondary coach, Jeff Mills. Jeff comes here from the University of Washington. He was there the last three years. Uh, we interviewed four different secondary coaches. Uh, that was the final piece to the puzzle right there. And making that one fit is really, really important because you guys know how this game's changed. I mean, you're playing sometimes with six defensive backs. Uh, that, that's a key, key part of this puzzle. Uh, Jeff's been a defensive coordinator at Nevada, um, um, Youngstown State, and one other place, Jeff, we, Idaho. So he has a heck of an experience. Um, um, we're, we're excited to have him. Defensive line coach, Archie McDaniel. Where's Archie? Archie comes here from the University of Tulsa. Um, played at Texas A&M, three-year starter. One of the leading tacklers in Texas A&M history. Uh, another coach that can go out there and show them how to do it. Not just teach them and talk, but show them. Uh, very excited to get him. His wife's an attorney. Excited to get her in this community as well. Outside linebacker, special teams, Coleman Hutzler. Coleman comes here. He was with Jim Harbaugh three years at Stanford. Actually, he was with the University of San Diego with Harbaugh, then went to Stanford, and uh, uh, was at Florida the last two years. Urban Meyer, one year, and um, Will Muschamp, the second year. Special teams. Special teams, uh, an area I think we can make a big impact and also coach the outside linebackers. Um, so that's our staff. Um, I'd love for you guys to meet them. Can't wait for the community of Albuquerque to get to know these guys. I think you're really going to like what they all bring individually and hopefully what we bring as a staff. Um, any questions? You guys have any questions for me, or do we want to break out right now and take questions, however we want to do it? If you guys have any questions for Coach, uh, just uh, quickly state your name again so he knows who you are, and then we'll break up after. Sure. 
Rick. Hey, Rick, sure. Uh, Bob, how important were recruiting territories in, in, in selecting the staff, or were they? I think it was, but you know, I remember when Nick Saban first went to LSU. I was at Notre Dame at the time. Nick was at Michigan State. I'll never forget people saying, how in the heck is Nick Saban? As Midwest, Northeast personality as there ever was, how's he going to recruit in the Deep South? You know what? Nick Saban's doing pretty good recruiting in the Deep South, even though he's probably never been there before prior to going to LSU. So, yeah, it did play a role, uh, particularly because in some of these states, uh, building relationships with high school coaches takes a long time and building that trust factor takes a long time it did but it wasn't the overriding factor because a great coach a great recruiter it doesn't matter if they're in Albuquerque or they're in uh, Seattle they're going to be a great coach and a great recruiter anybody else JJ Buck six in the sports down when you talk about fitting the puzzle pieces together how important was it that you found a system that had been together in the past before uh, that doesn't mean much to me at all to be quite honest. Uh, that, in fact, that's what I was, uh, I'm excited about. You know, I, I think sometimes when you've been together a long time, uh, in some ways, uh, may not be the proper term, but maybe it gets on cruise control just a little bit. I love innovative guys. I love innovative guys that come in with different ideas. And that's why I think um, when I talked about different personalities, you know, I, everybody has their own little deal. And what's fun is to get a bunch of guys together, and, and I think that gives you the best opportunity to make, to make an impact. So, you know, that would be way down the list to me uh, of guys that have actually worked together before. I think it is an asset that Derek Wareheim comes here, um, has been in Bob DeBess's system at Sam Houston State. But if Derek Wareheim wasn't a heck of a coach, I wouldn't have brought Derek Wareheim just here for that reason. So I don't think that's much of a factor. Anybody else? Now, I'll be relieved uh, Wednesday morning about 10 o'clock when these, when these faxes start rolling in. Now, we've been together, we've been together a long time now, you know, and uh, I, I really appreciate, too, uh, Jason Lensmeyer, uh, Coleman Hutzler, uh, Eric Sanchez, Brian Despain, the guys that were here from the beginning because it was, a, it was basically a two-man staff there over Christmas. And you look at these resumes of these guys, Archie, Tulsa played in a bowl game. Bob, the best, Derek Wareheim, they go to what, January 7th, Bob, the, the FCS championship. Ron West and DeAndre, San Francisco Bowl. Coleman would have been in the Gator Bowl, but he came early. Uh, um, Brian Despain, Texas A&M, plays in the Houston Bowl. So I go right on down the line. Uh, Jeff Mills, Washington, uh, played in uh, the Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. So. It was Jason Lensmeyer and it was Coleman Hutzler. And Coleman Hutzler could have gone to the bowl game with Florida, decided to come here early and help us. So I really appreciate those guys because uh, they, they were doing a bunch of work there early. Okay, guys, get around these coaches. You've heard me enough now.